Hello and welcome on our channel, uh, on our video lesson. And we continue today to explore predators and prey conflict and social behavior in living groups. Uh, today we talk about uh, territoriality and migration. In last practice we talked about conflicts uh, and a uh, common case of such uh, conflicts uh, is a competition. competition. Uh, the search food, water, reproduction are always very important uh, and it uh, causes a lot of competition in this. But today we will talk about more about the social life of animals. And I want to say that uh, the most common conflict in nature is the conflict of predator and prey. And everything is very serious here because uh, uh, they are not uh, uh, just uh, simple things. It, uh, we are talking about life. Uh, and let's watch this uh, slide uh, with the predator. What, who is the predator? Who is? Let's watch who is uh, this animal which can to kill another animal. And most animals are predators of one sort of another. The diversity of animal's life is sustained by the transfer of energy from eating all or part of the other organism, other animals, sometimes plants even, sometimes the animals, sometimes bacteria or fungi, but it is just a prey. Also, we uh, use different words such as uh, herbivore and uh, carnivore to describe animals that eat different kinds of organisms. As paro uh, is as much a predator for a seeds, point of view, uh, as a shark is. Uh, whatever they feed on predators face a broadly similar range of problems in their quest for food. Uh, where should they look? What should they take? When should they uh, look somewhere else or choose something different? So, of course, predator uh, cuts both ways. Animals may be predators, but they are frequently also prey and while enhancing their foraging skills, therefore selection of all likely to shape the ability to food towards the uh, foraging skills of others and so avoid becoming food themselves. Predator and prey may thus become locked in a, a coevolutionary arms, um, a rise of adaptation and co-interadaption, uh, so that foraging decision and anti-predator strategies run hand in hand uh, on an evolutionary time scale. Uh, the question is not even the size of the body, you know. It can be a very small predator, be a very small predator, but very dangerous. Also, there has been some adaptation, of course. Uh, let's find the differences. Uh, you see, that um, very often it is a big size of the body, of course. It's some adaptation for kill somebody, to kill and prey. And um, you see this feeding behavior predation. Uh, it's uh, very often eyes orientation uh, uh, like a face. Face, yes. Uh, the eyes uh, close together and very acute hearing, acute sense of smell, uh, very often echolocation and heat sensor like in the snails. And uh, you can kill animals different uh, ways. You can just run and kill, but sometimes you just uh, use the poison uh, for immobilization, for just uh, simple kill. And um, here we see the adaptation uh, of some uh, herbivores, uh, which very often are just a prey. And these animals uh, has differences with uh, teeth, 
the most herbivores grow contently, for example, and very big molars for eat plants, and um, uh, very often these animals have special bacteria into the digestive uh, tract, and uh, of course uh, uh, you see this part of the mandibula here with this uh, without uh, tooth, uh, toothless gap between and there's as molars for manipulation of food and tongue and uh, uh, feeding strategies yeah, yes uh, just uh, have a, a lot of grasses low growing herbs and sometimes uh, only leaves and woody plants uh, but uh, sometimes animals uh, can use not only grasses and leaves uh, eat fruits eat seeds uh, and uh, here we see the anti-predator behavior of these animals so the eyes uh, uh, close to hairs on both sides of the head uh, and uh, uh, we see that area of view uh, most than in a lion for example and acute hearing, acute sense of smell and one more uh, we will discuss today it is a um, grouping grouping in a big um, um, social groups uh, and it helped to uh, do the to, to do less the predator risk no of course that uh, we can find the large size like in, uh, in elephants and you can't fly just uh, or just be good runners and be poisonous too like or just be invisible invisible it is a strategy uh, are very interesting and we will talk about them today in the context of territoriality uh, in the victim uh, is expo uh, exposed to such risk one must adapt and has to be a large size be able to fly be as invisible or just be poisonous as possible or mimic imitation of death we, we talk about it previous practical and two more categories are animals that uh, I hybrid uh, between predator and prey it's uh, something with the changes in the teeth you see this in a human too uh, Eat combination of plants and animals meat, uh, big gay breed, dental uh, pattern between carnivores and herbivores, and uh, here this is without some uh, canine teeth, and animals that eat uh, carrion, carrion, here this is kind of animals um, in any cases the animals is harbor or plant or uh, it is surrounded by other animals uh, uh, as it its own spices of another spices so animals do not act in isolation uh, their environment for Indian uh, mating uh, migration uh, avoiding predators uh, practically any aspect of behavior is likely to be influenced in some way by who else is around in some cases the uh, um, presence uh, of others may facilitate behavior by providing opportunities for mating say or indicating that food might be in other cases it may constant it perhaps by increasing competition and some animals try to solve problems alone and uh, we have already listened spices such as polar bears and koalas but still more spices in the planet uh, lead to a social life so it, on some occasions it will pay to be in a group like a social aggregation houses on a some it will be better to include others from the uh, vicinity uh, altogether territoriality and social aggregation and territorial behavior are thus uh, two sides of the same coin 
And today we will talk about social behavior in general. In general, so what is social behavior? Social behavior is behavior uh, among two or more organisms within the same species and uh, encompasses any behavior in uh, uh, which one member affects the other. And social behavior typically refers to any interaction in, uh, among members of the same species, but it also appears to animals of different species, including predator prey interaction. Um, relationship and social behavior help, help animals to adapt in variety of environments and social behavior uh, has avoided uh, independently in many species of animals and uh, invertebrates as well as uh, vertebrates have complex social organism and today we will talk about this and animal animals need social behavior yeah, the set of interactions that occur between two or more individuals animals usually of the same species when they form simple aggregation cooperate in sexual or parental behavior engage in di disputes over territory and access to mates or subtly communicate across species Sets of com uh, consistent uh, social relationships produce social system or social organizations that can be a vari uh, variance on monogamous or polygamous uh, themes of reproduction and involve various types of he hel helps uh, in cooperative relationship. In the nature of any social system is uh, ultimately dependent by ecological and social uh, circumstance, demography and kipship. And here I, I will leave the links a lot of, we will discuss about this kind of relationship between the uh, uh, different kind of animals. Aggregations have been explored extensively from the standpoint of the impact on survival. The primary functions of aggregation appear to be feeding and defense. A general territory explaining why individuals should prefer to aggregate was first proposed by the Brighton and Hamilton uh, and uh, they there hypothesized that animals might come together to form a uh, so-called selfish herd and uh, where an individual's changes of being eaten are sub, uh, substantially reduced, uh, especially if that individual remains in the interior of the group. For example, it may be better to be in the center of the group, of the school of fish, for example, if predators tend to attack uh, the captured fish in the outer layer. And where location within the group matters, social interaction will likely sort of social status. With some individuals uh, getting favorite position by the dominance or by a nepotism that it's a uh, preferential treatment uh, uh, shown on one's uh, relatives. And living in a group also protect group members uh, through a dilution effect. Uh, uh, the general idea is that a predator can uh, consume prey at only a given rate and can usually eat just one prey animal at a time. Uh, and consequently, animals in groups tend to overwhelm a predator's uh, consumption capacity. And thus, any given individual has a smaller chance if been eaten and just uh, groups of animals may also confuse predators by looking ledges and they actually are or by moving apart in uh, unpredictable way something this this way like in fishes in a school and this action often case the predator to uh, hesitate just long enough uh, permit the prey escape. One more alarm calls and uh, other complex signal and behavior within aggregations can also reduce the uh, likelihood of predation.
uh, calls may uh, uh, coordinate groups, escape from danger, confuse a predator and bomb, uh, prompt uh, individuals to seek protect sites of um, uh, shared uh, Alarm comes uh, may also convey information about the type of predator habits and uh, lead to the appropriate uh, evas evas behavior. An alarm calling is usually considered a good example of the uh, altruistic behavior. We will talk about this kind of behavior um, um, uh, next time. Why individuals give an alarm call to bind with is not necessary obvious sense. Uh, the act of calling may attract a predator and endanger the caller. Uh, also, alarm calls are given by birds in flocks of mixed spices and creation where keen selection is unlikely to be important. As usual, I will leave links. Um, to this video and uh, we will talk about each factors in more detail soon and look at the table at the uh, advantages and disadvantages uh, of living in a group here we see the benefits like advantages and the uh, cost and uh, of course here we see a lot of risks uh, but today um, it's uh, mostly we will talk about benefits. Living in groups, animal population are often organized into groups. And uh, in addition to aggregation, which is built on solving some simple problems, we can find a more complex form of social behavior. It is a cooperation, how the system of social uh, behavioral system and social organization. And uh, we will discuss this issue soon, of course. Here we see this hunted group size. We will discuss this issue because the system is complex. And now let's talk about how big the group should be in this case. Uh, uh, group size is spotted hyenas, you know, these animals with a kind of prey being stalked. And zebra generally show alarm response only to large packs and rarely to pairs of single tones, which are more likely to be hunting hazards. And uh, in, in lions group may be bigger than expected from hunting success because large groups are better able to stop hyenas uh, because this kind of animals usurping the kill. Uh, in this place, and sometimes group size reflects the need for an important division of labor. Is it possible then to make general prediction about how, how large group should be in, in different cases? Uh, here we see this is a wild group and may serve a variety of functions, many appear to a uh, hinge of a reduction and as a risk of predation or increased feeding efficiency. We have mentioned the one of these predator de deterrents, but it's important to look at some of the other because they show that similar advantages can arise in very different ways. That, that this can be interacting and determine whether or not animals from group the de deterrent effects of grouping arise from a number of uh, consequences of grouping by prey for the likely success for a predator, increased risk of injury during just attack and loss of the element of surprise among them. But de deterrence is just one of the ways in which the risk to individual prey can be reduced by forming groups. And here we see this uh, uh, paradoxal. Joining in a group may reduce the risk of being encountered uh, by a predator at all. Individually, we might expect a group to be more notable than a single individual and thus more likely to, to be detected. Indeed, in many cases, uh, detectability does seem to increase with group size. The characteristically strong smell of large bird roasts, for example, appears to make them more attractive to predators, but some aspects of, of grouping structure 
however may uh, lessen uh, consequences um, to predators that hunt visually because groups are likely to be scarce uh, scarce than uh, skated uh, individuals. More of uh, population is uh, concentrated at uh, favorite points of spice and may be missed more often by predator uh, just venturing across their home range. And here we see this uh, one more example like a diluting individual risk. Even in a group, in uh, uh, discovered the fact uh, that an individual is uh, associating with other may still reduce its risk in uh, capture because the predator has a number of possible uh, victims from which to choose the uh, probability to a given individual driving the short straw in the reciprocal of the group size. Uh, and more uh, those individuals not caught during an attack can escape while the predator handles its victim. In many cases, anti-predator response such as mobiling or alarm calling confer additional protection. And here we see the uh, dilution effect assumes all individuals are equally uh, vulnerable to attack, but this is often not the case. Uh, young or sick individuals, for example, usually present easier targets than healthy adults and uh, are disproportionately uh, more likely to be attacked and however just being in the wrong place in a group uh, may be enough to render an individual more uh, vulnerable uh, Prey in the uh, edge, for instance, are likely to be more exposed than those in the middle, uh, such as by increased attack or mortality on the uh, edge of group and the fact that individuals in the prey, uh, periphery are often more uh, vigilant. Uh, here we see this uh, uh, vigilant animals and in the center part just uh, have a food and sometimes animals see young saddle surrounded by uh, females of the herd and females who face out and protect young uh, babies the other females are, are grazing and the sole male saddle of the third herd is off the side and here we see the lynx and uh, one more general what we have in general, therefore, we might expect a certain amount of the competition for a place in the middle of the group, uh, a prediction supported in some spices by the tendency for socially dominant individuals to be at the center while surrounded squeeze uh, out the periphery. Uh, hunger individuals may also tolerate the height that risk in the periphery in order to avoid competing for food uh, like a competition uh, at the center. Uh, the anti effect arises because uh, uh, vigilant uh, vig uh, vulnerable can depend on the special relationship between group members. And here this is one more. Uh, slight and confusing the predator, uh, talking about it. Other properties of social hesitation can enhance safety beyond a simple dilution of risk. One of uh, this is the capacity to confuse the predator when approaches the schools broke up and scared in all directions, making it difficult for the predator to attack them and uh, obvious predictions therefore is that prey should per, uh, prefer to associate with other or similar appearance a prediction for this for which uh, there is some supporting evidence with respect to size and fish of in fish and early detection and uh, uh, vigilant uh, vigilance
Yes, many predators depend on surprise for successful attack. Uh, if it is spotted too early, predators' chances success are likely to drop. As flocks became bigger, so did the distance uh, at which the, for example, pigeons look flight from the are approaching hawks, thus reducing its chance of success. So. Uh, the villagers is uh, for birds it's very important for other animals the same and here this is the article uh, in this article you can find the characteristic of different behavioral strategies uh, depending on the type of predator and prey uh, for africa animals africa animals it's very interesting but uh, we move uh, to the, the next uh, table, reactive anti-predator behavioral performed by large uh, mammals when the predator uh, just hunt on it and their hypothesis adaptive function and uh, prediction of the most effective response to each hunting style uh, for, for some categories and for some predicted effect again. So, uh, move on the next, uh, effects of finding food and water, it is um, one way, one more way, effects of finding foods, uh, another problem with the vigilance areas from the confounding relationship between group size and finding behavior. Feeding, feeding behavior, while joining a group may help an animal avoid becoming food, it might also help it find food, but because anti-predator behavior and foraging are likely to complete for the animal's time, the two benefits can be uh, interdependent, making it uh, difficult to decide because it affects uh, in their respective relationship with group size. Problems can uh, arise in a number of ways and uh, here this is a, uh, one uh, point of view finding better feeding areas <coughs> we know that uh, hungry animals may range over a number of potential feeding sites uh, before deciding which to exploit and the accumulation of other for uh, forages uh, at rich sources of food the great uh, like uh, aggregation response might provide a simple cue and the birds typically feed in flocks and those in large flocks experience a greater rate of food in a, a intake so landing in pools where there are already lots of others other birds should be a good way to reach picking and here we see even more effects more time to feed uh, in uh, cause the effect a role in the double benefit produced by a bird's model of group sites and uh, vigilance uh, implies that feeding benefits arise because individuals a large group can sit spend less time scaring various st studies have shown that time spent feeding increase with group size as time spent in uh, vigilance and here we see this article and links uh, links uh, to this article and one more uh, local information about food of course i use the photo of chimpanzee uh, vigilance may in fact be detected directed towards com companions and have little or nothing to do with predators too obvious and interrelated reason why it might be would keep an, an eye on uh, companions as a risk of competition and loca uh, locating resources and then animals feed in sensory contact with one another information about their foraging success is used incidentally and in some cases uh, deliberately and transmitted between them foraging this generates public information about the food supply and even more in this article uh, can to read just <coughs> as usual some of the references to the literature studies uh, were done on 
primates uh, very interesting how they convey information about food to each other and to, um, here one more produces and uh, sc uh, scrounges uh, uh, one more strategy there are rich opportunities for catching uh, in uh, on public information can lead to some individuals specializing in exploiting others and uh, Bernard and Sabley uh, referred to this as uh, uh, scrooters while the diligently um, foraging provides uh, way termed producers. Producers and scroungers can be th thought of as alternative strategies of uh, tactics and scrouging and uh, spathing groups evolved from its effects on individual food intake. Scrouding is likely to have an impact on several other aspects of group foraging. To maximize returns on their efforts, produce might be expected to distance themselves from potential competition, com competitors, while scroungers should actively seek the uh, vicinity of their forages, foragers. In this case, the dolphins drive the prey and uh, are there reasons that the fish rise to the surface of the water and even jump out. Uh, if it be, but the seagulls steal this, um, the spray and all work together but uh, uh, in different percent. And here we see this important application here all together uh like a summary but we move uh, on the next one scrutiny and vigilance uh, for birds especially for city birds and here we see this where the investment by scroungers and scrounging for feeding opportunities may offset these negative effects by increasing of the overall Vigilance of the group and, and girls may be uh, having um, nothing from the lowers and view, viewpoint, but they are also highly vigilant, vigilant and come uh, conspicuous to characteristics that make them an effectively your environment system. The uh, heightened uh, vigilance of Crowders is part of the, their life, just lifestyle. And uh, in city two, and this Cronin and the social learning, uh, this uh, third kind of birds um, uh, just occupy the cities, you know. Uh, interface effect of Cronin may also have some more subtle, subtle social consequences. And as we saw, being in a group provides an opportunity to learn from individuals and there is a plenty of evidence that skills are accurate uh, via social learning. And, but if social information leads to scrolling, the spread of learned uh, trends through the group may be reduced because scrollers uh, obtain a producer source by usurping it rather than uh, and one more, one more group is uh, local information centers. Yes, in group individuals may be able to ca capitals of information about resources while uh, in a foraging group, but, but useful information may also be able when groups are not actively foraging. For uh, for spices, uh, relying on Patchy resources that vary in their special and temporal viability. Day to day for for Asian may be a uh, chancy business. On the day uh, bonza the next nothing at all. If uh, there was some way of finding uh, out how well other individuals had done. However, it might be possible to uh, exploit the information and improve success. 
food doors can provide the necessary case of some animals necessary cues and one more uh, in this uh, part of our practical are the consequences of uh, grouping for finding food uh, yes of course it's better to be alone and associating in groups can confer a number of other feeding advantages a lot large groups can sometimes uh, tackle prey that uh, are beyond the capacity of single individual as in uh, various Carnivores, birds uh, of prey, insect, and insects, uh, like mixed spices association. Therefore, single spices grouping can extend a, a predator foraging niche, and groups may be able to make multiple kills uh, or kill more quickly, so increasing overall foraging. And uh, however, foraging. Uh, efficiency may be improved in more subtle ways. The de deployed food patch uh, replenish over time. It's important that the predator does not return to a patch too soon or leave it too late since it will reduce its uh, expect rate and length. Um, and uh, one more uh, in this practice. Uh, very important it is a territory uh, where live the animals group so far we have considered uh, on the cost and benefits of social aggregation as a strategy for exploring resources and however social relationship may lead to not uh, to aggregation but to sp uh, spicing out the territorial behavior a territory can be defi defined as a more or less exclusive area defined by an individual or group and thus acknowledging aggregation and territoriality uh, as part of the uh, continuum of social relationship rather than manual ex exclusive alternatives. Uh, defense can evolve over aggregation or various forms of keep out signals such as a son or, uh, or just a door use uh, and territory structure and function what is this and territories are more than just defended areas they are dynamic are often changing in size and shape with the season population density age or other factors and see how the fish divided a certain territory and the bondages of the uh, hexagon form of area are clearly visible and uh, here we see this uh, territories are more than just defended areas yes it's uh, here we see this form of territory in some cases and we will meet this form in nature very often a simple example in bees Yes, we all know this form, but not only there are stones on the bottom of the salt like here, the stones is just salt in several elastic discs. Uh, an important point uh, about perfectly matching uh, in hexagons form is that they leave no spice between them. Absolutely, all spice. Uh, in inside of this hexagon and what we have uh, why defend a territory uh, its economic benef uh, benefits uh, defendably as usual the answer comes down to reproductive uh, costs and benefits the time energy and uh, enduring cost of finding a uh, obvious but on ships Signals can be closely to and birds seen uh, on exploit thin and singing for hours to address its presence uh, on uh, and serious drain on the time and energy and may risk death from the predator. What reproductive benefits might 
offset such costs. The two most obvious relate to food and mates, of course, in this case. Much evidence such as that territorial behavior is linked that, uh, with the spatial and uh, or temporal distribution of the availability of food. In the social primates, for example, spices that include a lot of fo uh, foliage in their diet tend to leave smaller territories and those making fruit use the fruit for it and uh, uh, in this uh, work of the scientist. And territoriality also plays an important role in making success, often because of its relationship with food availability. Uh, males with good territories can get just several females, while they are less well pro provisioned uh, neighbors remain unmated. And sharing a territory, it's a very difficult question. Mm, territories need not be definite exclusively. Uh, sometimes it may pay to share territory with another individual that uh, at other times would be regarded as an intruder. intruder. And uh, then food availability was high. They often allowed another bird, for example, usually in July, uh, of a male from the neighboring flock to share the territory as a satellite. Uh, the owners thus accept help with the benefits as a payment from the satellite and uh, allowing the satellite to remain on the territory as a trade off between feeding and defense might under the right condition be expected to lead to the evo evolution in group territory. Many spices uh, defend territory as groups, often with the reproductive cost of additional residence between born by dominant breed breeding individuals in return for various payments such as the help with the just vigilance. And here we see the changing of territory. <coughs> If we have the territory and don't have the food on this territory, you just must to change it. Uh, finding a place to live implies moving around, even in the present place, in the suitable not now, it may not be in the future. Food evidently many change, for ex example, uh, all the animal may be challenged by a territorial intruder when an organism moves from one place to another we often use the term migration and here we see this how many spices migrate and how long and this uh, thousand of kilometers and miles and we will talk about it is the second part of our practical just finding a place to live it's very important and even in a presence a place is su suitable now it may not be in the future of course and here we see the approximately 2000 of uh, roads uh, uh, animals uh, uh, mammal, mammals and 10,000 of bird spices migrate long distance each year in response to the seasons, just a season migration. Some spices extend this strategy to migrate annually between the north and south hemispheres. In fish spices, uh, uh, just here, most fish spices are relatively limited in their movements, remaining in single geographical area in making short migration for wintering and sprout or just to feed and few hundred spices migrate long distance in some cases it's thousand kilometers about uh, 100 uh, spices of fish including several spices of salmon migrate between salt water and fresh water and they just dead rooms uh, in insects yes this uh, uh, can fly some wind uh, insects such as locusts 
looks and certain butterflies and uh, uh, dragonflies and uh, with strong flight migrate long distance mass migration occurring in mammals such as uh, Serengeti, great migration and annual certain pattern of movement with uh, uh, about one million uh, will be and hundreds of thousands of other large animals including gazelles, zebras and some reptiles can migrate uh, and uh, even crustaceans uh, migrate more specifically the Christmas Island red crab uh, can migrate so behavior what what uh, uh, the animal does it how it does uh, just we have the problem and why to do this and to have some strategies and here we see the kilometers of this migration for some butterflies for of course this uh, it's just uh, Guinness records for some animals just we have this problem a behavioral solution ecological problem or just inner uh, problem and let's watch how animals solve this problem here we see this just movement uh, we know that movement just some simple simple movement kinesis positive negative taxes immigration this mo movement too and uh, here we see the table chosen uh, where to settle and when and he, uh, where when to move somewhere else is clearly important to an animal and much evidence such as that natural selection has sharpened to this uh, decision um, uh, like all adaptive decision however mechanism are required to ensure they work in order to the animal to end up uh, where it needs to be it has to decide uh, where to go and now when it uh, has got there in short it needs an ability to orient orientate and navigate and uh, here we see this uh, examples uh, migration migration can be uh, very different and in many ways actually there are more than uh, just uh, this kind of migration but today it is migration that interested us and the migration of a large number of individuals like a social migration like a group migration uh, move on long distance and today we are we are talking about social behavior of spices that migrate and uh, here we see this changing of territory animal migration is a relatively long distance movement of the individuals usually on a seasonal basis it is found uh, in all major animal groups including birds mammals fish reptiles and uh, the trigger for the immigration may be a local climate, local availability of food, the season of the year, or for mating re uh, season, um, mating reasons uh, to be counted as a true migration and not just a local di dispersal uh, or e e eruption. The movement of the animals should be an annual or seasonal, like, uh, such as northern hemispheres, bird migration, so for the winter, um, move on long distance, or major habitat change as part of the uh, life, such as, as young uh, Atlantic salmon living um, in the river and their birth then they have uh, reached a few inches in size and move and migration and compasses for related concepts some concepts in this slide uh, the migration can be obligate and facility and uh, can be complete migration or par uh, partial migration and three many types of migration are 
like a pilotage, compass orientation and true navigation. Most uh, migratory movements occur on an annual cycle. Some daily movements are also referred to as a, a true migration. And uh, uh, here we can find all this and pilotage and compass orientation and true navigation. We talk about this. A pilotine moves from the one familiar location to another until, uh, until it uh, reaches its destination. Orientation can detect compass uh, direction and travels in a straight line until the destination is reached. And navigation it uses current location and compass direction to determine what direction to go. So it is a very difficult question. Uh, animal navigation is the ability to many animals to find their way accurately without maps or instruments like uh, for humans in uh, uh, air. Birds such uh, as the Atlantic tern, uh, insects such as uh, monarch butterfly and fish such as the salmon regularly migrate thousands of miles to uh, and from their breeding grounds and many other species navigate effectively over shorter distance and navigating from a no position <coughs> using only information about one's own speed and direction uh, was subject even just uh, Charles Darwin uh, as a possible mechanism uh, in the 20th century, Carl von Frisch showed that honeybees can navigate by the sun, by the polarization pattern of the blue sky, and by the Earth's magnetic field of this. They uh, rely on the sun when possible. And uh, uh, some scientists showed that homing pigeons could similarly make uh, used to a range of navigation cues including the sun, your magnetic filter, uh, all just for special olfactory vision. And um, we will talk about it. Several species of animal can uh, integrate cues of different types of uh, to orient themselves and navigate effectively. Insects and birds are able to combine learning uh, landmarks with a centered direction from the US magnetic field uh, or from the sky to uh, identify where they are and so to navigate. Internal maps are often formed using vision, but uh, other sense, including uh, olfaction uh, and echo. Special echolocation may else, uh, also be used. Also, sometimes use uh, interchangeability, orientation, and navigation. In fact, refer to different things. Orientation, in its simple sense, means taking up a particular bearing, a due source, uh, with respect to the current position, regardless of destination. And uh, thus, if the animal in a road across open country is uh, displaced laterally, and la it will carry on traveling parallel to its original course. Some form of directional information is uh, required for this, but it's used only to determine the um, prescribed bearing. Goal orientation on the other land as a hand uh, involves leading towards a particular location. So it is a very difficult question uh, uh, for using the, the visible uh, things and uh, invisible for humans. For example, we can to see the magnetic uh, at all. Migratory birds may use two electromagnetic tools to find their destination, one that it is entirely innate and another that relies to experience uh, two ways. Uh, young birds uh, on its first migration files in the correct direction according to the youth magnetic field uh, uh, because they don't have any experience. 
but does not know how far the journey will be and does this sort of radical pair mechanism uh, whereby chemical reaction and special photopigments in eye and special area in a, um, in a brain and uh, even a uh, sun position uh, in any way it can be used uh, in here we see this uh, uh, just a link if you want to know to more about this um, uh, special um, uh, electrons of obtainal uh, how the birds do it and here we see this part of the brain here just what what happened with experience it uh, learns various landmarks and this mapping is uh, done by magnetic uh, magnetists in the trigeminal system which tells the birds how strong the field is and because birds migrate between northern and southern regi regions the magnetic field states of different latitudes letting it interpret uh, the radical pair mechanism more accurately and let it now when it has reached its destination. There is a neural connection between the eye uh, with this uh, view of the eye and the special part of the brain, cluster N, the part of the forebrain. Here we see this part. Uh, that is active during migration orientation in this period uh, sub, uh, such that the birds may ac actually be able to see the magnetic field to, uh, and here we see this part of the brain cluster and, and here are retina signals move to uh, close to cerebellum place do you remember the area of the brain in mammals and humans has close to cerebellum in the semispheres close to cerebellum but for birds they have two parts of the this navigate system it's a, a visual uh, nucleus um, <coughs> in the midbrain but uh, one more cluster n in the uh, close to nose and so it's uh, very important for a bird migration and many bird uh, populations migrate long distance along a flyway here we see this flyway for some kind of uh, animals for some kind of birds of course migration is a regular seasonal movement often north and south and marked by many species of birds birds movements include those made in response to change in food availability, habitat, or just weather. Sometimes the journey are not termed true migration because they are irregular, uh, nomadism, uh, invasions, uh, or in only one direction, dispersal, movement uh, of young away from the natural area. Migration is marked by its annual seasonality. Non-migratory birds are said to be resident or sedentary, and here we see this primary motivation for migration: just find food. Example: diurnal migration and raptors. It's, uh, why the most kinds of birds move only daytime? Not because the uh, sun position. Not only because this. Uh, some large broad uh, winded birds uh, rely on internal columns use this hot air uh, to just uh, keep energy migratory spices in these groups have great uh, difficulty crossing large bodies of wat uh, water and since thermals only from over all land because uh, the area with the water don't give this heat columns and if you have this kind of winds uh, exactly it's a very good example of wings shape everything turned out, out to be genetically determined 
and we see the shape of the wings. If a bird, uh, a big bird, use hot air currents, if has a special wing, and here the road is important. You need to find a well heated surface that gives off heat. Uh, just uh, rocks, mountains, open areas of land without forest. Uh, warm up well and here we see this big birds use this warm area of air uh, for flying special way uh, just don't uh, move the wings so often uh, don't uh, um, uh, just waste the energy uh, just use the hot air and uh, move this way it's very uh, cute for these big birds and nocturnal migration it's the, the opposite side of the coin many of the smallest birds including the fly catchers for example migrate large distance usually at night they land in the morning and may feed for a few days before resuming the migration the birds are referred to as passage migraines in the regions that they occur for short destination between the origin and the destination nocturnal migraines minimize predation avoid overheating and can feed during the day one cost uh, of nocturnal migration is the loss of sleep. Migrants may be able to alter their quality to sleep to com compensate the, for the loss. Many long distance migrants appear to be genetically programmed to respond to the change in daylight. Yes, and if we say about birds migrants, uh, we can just stop only for. Uh, air uh, here if, if we are talking about bird migration we just can't think uh, about penguins these guys are just super uh, and here i just leave the links about migration of penguins and um, pay attention to the distance uh, here I, I found the distance a minimum distance coverage of penguins distance and it's not uh, just to fly through the air, but uh, it's swimming, swimming in the cold water at thousand miles, kilometers, thousand kilometers, or just uh, this slide shows how we can observe the accumulation uh, of animals and their movements using modern methods. Uh, I think everyone has heard about the bird uh, powerings on the legs, no pause, but um, uh, now you, uh, you, you can use satellites, we can use just uh, this uh, specific tracking uh, and use satellites uh, to know how long distance animal migrates. And uh, if you want to know more about bird migration, then I give a link to the site, very interesting, and even in a real time, some videos with real time. And uh, we must talk about uh, fish migration. If you, if we are, have already to uh, talked about migration in the water, then let's talk about fishes, fish. Fish meant uh, types, uh, kinds of fish migrate uh, on a regular basis on time scales uh, ranging from daily to annually or, or longer and over distance uh, ranging from a few meters to thousand kilometers fish usually migrate to feed or to reproduce but in other cases the reasons are unclear uh, uh, some particular types of migration are anadromes, uh, in which adult fish live in a sea and migrate in, into fresh water to spawn, and catadromus, in which adult fish live in fresh water and migrate in a salt water to spawn. And here this is 
kind of catadromous migration and anadromous migration special uh, and here just describing what is this but we have more even more different types of fish migration it can be just uh, um, potamadromous Okanodromus, Oceanodromus, the Dianodromus, and here we see the describing of uh, these kinds of uh, migration for fishes. I just don't stop and eat. Uh, when fishes migrate from one freshwater habit, uh, habitat to another in search of food or sprawling, it's called as a patadromus migration. Fishes also migrate to lakes in places where oxygen concentration in water is more and where uh, there is evidence of food for uh, juveniles they just hatch from the eggs it's very important to oxygen and here we see uh, oceanodromous oceanodromous migration this migration is from sea water to sea water but a long uh, long distance for um, you see 12,000 marine spices regularly migrate within their like uh, herons and cods, tunas and diadromous migration when the fish can migrate from the fresh water to sea water like uh, involves uh, some um, about 100 spices it's very very interesting to move through the osmotic barriers you know what is this osmotic pressure and how it works in this organism about catadromous migration about types of this migration a little more and uh, one more slide it's almost the end of our uh, work together uh, work today and about anadromous migration of fishes and here we see this distance and uh, uh, where it can be in different places of the earth and uh, uh, we talk about vertical migration it's very interesting for uh, thea spices the movement of fishes towards upper surface of the sea during night and towards the bottom during the daytime uh, because the dead vertical migration is a common behavioral many marine spies move to the surface at night and move to the bottom in the daytime uh, factors playing role in vertical migration it can be exogenous endogenous factors like biological rhythms like sex uh, uh, itself and uh, exogenous uh, involved factors acting on the organisms such as light and oxygen and temperature of the surface of the uh, water and predator prey interaction and here we see this is what happened with animals some animals move up in the night and uh, one more uh, this vertical migration significance but uh, it's um, if you if you remember as important facts in a schooling manner uh, because we today talk about social life of animals and of course it is a schooling it is a social life special special way uh, and the basis uh, of case fish migration is following types i just don't stop and if you want to know more you just can to buy this book about uh, uh, introduction to fish migration uh, very interesting I uh, leave the links and uh, a little bit uh, about sea turtle migration it's very interesting that uh, it can uh, just move through the miles thousand miles for example in Atlantic uh, North Atlantic um, Ocean and you know this about uh, how these little turtles move to water in a special end here uh, how long distance it can move uh, through the oceans and um, um, wild migration this is just a record um, um, 
uh, how long distance they can move through the ocean it's the best uh, uh, longest no migration for anima animals uh, just uh, 12,000 miles for blue uh, while uh, the biggest uh, mammals uh, in the planet so is it just uh, in Africa we know that so many animals can migrate uh, you see this number, it's uh, impossible just Thompson's Magazelles move, it is a big migration of the animals in Africa and here is this uh, uh, area in Kenya always migrate the same way and even butterfly uh, uh, can migrate and uh, fly up to 3000 miles each way, oh it's uh, impossible even and leave so much as these butterflies in the trees and so we have uh, the links to this video i will leave it as usual and your home work in a book uh, in book animal behavior two chapter about communication and migration and eating behavior of animals about predator and uh, uh, the prey and one more book about uh, um, chapter 7 social organization so it is all for today bye bye see you later